Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well today we're going to build this full width slider up here. Really easy to do, so let's get started. As you can see it automatically rolls. We've got some dot navigation down below and we've got some arrow navigation left and right. So let's enable Visual Builder and we'll start from scratch. OK, what I'm going to do is delete this row right here and we'll start again. Let's add a new row, a little blue button to add a new row. I'm going to use a full width row for this because we're going to make it a full width slider. When you use a full width section, you get a limited amount of modules that are designed specifically to be full width. So I'm going to use full width slider right there. And there we are, it's popped one in for us. Let's just move this other section down here. There's two ways of moving sections. If you've got a lot of sections on a page, it's easier to go down the bottom here. And they've got a little icon here. If you click on it, you can just grab the sections you want and pull them up and down like that. If you've just got a few sections, you can just grab one by the handle and pull it down to where you want. Okay, well, let's go into our slider. We've got a purple tab for a full width section. There's no row in here. We've just got the actual module itself. So let's go into the slider module. Here's the two default slides that it puts in. Let's get rid of the second one and we'll work on this first one here. If we look down below, you can choose the elements that you want to show. This is the navigation really, show arrows and show controls. If you want the whole slider to link to something, you can put a link in here. And as always, best practices, if you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking off site, open it in a new tab so your site stays open. Okay, I'm going to leave those just like they are. So I'm going to go into my first slide here, hit the little cog. Obviously, you're going to want to put your title in here. And whatever you want your button to say down below. And your content right here. And like any text field, you can align, bold, italicize, make lists, change things into headings and add media if you want to. I'm going to leave mine just like that. You've also got an option down below here to add image in a video. And that will add images and videos on the left hand side here. If I add an image, let's pop in perhaps my logo and it'll look far too big initially, but we'll fix that in a minute. It puts it on the left hand side and right aligns the text there. Like I say, that's way too big for me, but I'll adjust that in a moment. You can add a video if you want to by uploading an MP4 or something like that and doing it there. Now, if we move down, here's the link for our actual slide. This is for the slide, not the whole slider itself. And you've got one for your button here. Obviously, put your link in there, same best practices. If you want the whole module to link to somewhere, you can put a link in there. Okay, let's move down to our background. You've got color, gradient, image or video background. Let's add a color and an image. Now you can do co combinations of color, image or gradient image. So I've added the purple there and you'll see why in a moment. And I'm going to also add a picture. Let's add this one. And you may be asking, well, what was the point of adding the color? Well, I'll show you. As long as we're not using parallax, I'll flip parallax on for a moment. So you can see parallax is where it slides up at a different rate. The background's moving at a different rate from the rest of the site rolling up there. That's true parallax. And they've also got CSS parallax, which is fixed position. But I'm going to turn that off because we put that color in. And if you've got parallax enabled, these will not be there. And what I want with that color is background image blend. And if you click on it, you've got all kinds of styles and you can create some marvelous effects with these styles. You really can. But I'm just going to use multiply today, which works for me. That's great. OK, well, let's move on to our design tab now. I'm not going to use an overlay on this slide because we've got our nice background color in there. Navigation is what I showed you earlier. We won't have any because I've only got the one slide. Is the dots and the arrows. And you can choose your colors here. 
We will have some, so I'm going to just make mine white. Now here's the image that we put in there. You can give it rounded corners or borders. All the usual things and drop shadow if you want. I'm going to leave mine just how it is because I've got a bit of drop shadow on it anyway. And if we roll down, of course you can style your text any way you wish. Just like any other text module. And you can style the title and the body text separately. Divi, as usual, comes with a crazy amount of fonts. If you want to audition a particular font, just roll over it and it'll show you an example. I'm going to leave mine on default, but let's capitalize it. And let's bring it up a bit. And let's also perhaps make it a bit bolder, say semi bold. There we go, that's fine. Rolling on down, you can do your body text. And of course you can customize your button how you wish by using the customized styles in the button here. So let's make everything white and let's perhaps give it a blue background. Now you can do the border the same way. I'm actually going to take my border away. Just grab it, take it down to zero if you want no border. And of course you can set a hover color by going up over the dark legending of the element you want to affect. If there's an arrow, Desktops when your mouse is not on it. Hover obviously is when your mouse is on it. Let's make that purple when the mouse is on it. Well, in fact, let's make it red to stand out better. So there we go. I'm fairly happy with that first slide. So I'm going to save it. it takes us back to the main forward slider settings. Let's either add a new slide or I'm going to clone this one. Actually, I was going to shrink down that, wasn't I? So let's go back in there quickly. Go to design. I'm going to go down to sizing content width. I'm going to pull this down so that shrinks down a little bit. It's pulling everything in. So I've got something like that. That works for me. Okay, let's go back and create a new slide. I'm just going to clone this one. And let's work on our second one. Just so we know which one it is. Let's say slide two. I won't change the text or the button or anything like that. But let's take that image away. We'll go down to the background. We'll take the color away and let's put a different image in there. Okay and we've gone over the parallax and all that so I'm not going to change that. Let's go to our design. This time let's put a, an overlay in there. And as you can see that's darkened it down. You can change whatever color you want here. And you can actually put an overlay around the text if you've got a busy picture and your text is getting lost in there. Hit use text overlay. And there it is right there. And again, you can choose whatever color you want. So if I make it black, you can go in there. You can pull the opacity down with this slider here to see some of the image through and still be able to read the text. Navigation, you can set it a different color on this slide if you want to but I'm going to leave mine just as it is. That's great so I'm going to save this and go back to our forward slider settings. Now what if I wanted to make this deeper? Let's go over to our design. We're in the forward slider settings here. Go into sizing and here we got minimum height, maximum height and regular height. So you can slide these up or down to make it bigger or smaller. If you use height it'll always be that height. If you use minimum height, it won't get any smaller than what you set it there. If you use maximum height, it won't get any bigger. But I'm pretty happy to have it around 779. You can slide right in a title and you can fine tune with the little sliders there. OK, well, I want this slider to actually automatically roll. I don't want people to be able to have to click on it to see the next slide. So still in the design tab, we close up sizing there. We can go down to animation. And here you've got automatic animation. I'm going to flip this to on. It's going to roll around every seven seconds there. It's a bit slow for me. I'm going to change mine to four seconds, which would be 4,000 milliseconds. And it's set to continue automatic slide on hover here. If your mouse is on it, it's going to stop sliding to the next slide when that is switched off. If you turn it on, it's going to continue rolling around when they put their mouse on it. 
I like to leave that to off because if there's some information here people can put their mouse on it'll pause it so they can read it or click the call to action button that's entirely up to you so let's save our changes now save the page changes down the bottom here if it's not open hit the little purple button save changes and let's exit the visual builder and make sure this is going to work on the front end there we go there's our first slide four seconds later it should pop into our next slide and then four seconds later back to the first one again obviously i've only done two slides on here you can do as many as you like but that is how to create a full width slider obviously this is a fairly simple example you can really go to town and make some wonderful sliders with this so i hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to our youtube channel once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.